Hello there everyone in YouTube land. This is Josh Tryon Tech and today I'm going to be reviewing the latest Windows 10 tablet that I just picked up about a week ago and that is the Huawei MateBook E as you see here. So first off we're going to talk about what comes inside. All right so this is not an unboxing video. I wanted to do an unboxing video, but when I purchased the tablet, um, I was not able to get my tripod at the time. Um, and wifey wasn't really feeling like holding the camera for me. So uh, we're a little over a week later of use, about a week or so. And so I'm gonna talk about what comes in here. So first off, um, this here is the included keyboard cover. And inside, inside is the, if I can get it pulled out, it's really stuck in there. Okay, so that's the included keyboard cover. Then inside is the tablet itself. Okay, so that comes with it. Keyboard cover, which is great. I wish more companies would do that. <clears throat> Microsoft. <laughs> Anyways, sorry, I had something stuck in my throat. Um, something else that comes here with this is a USB-C to USB-A 3.0 dongle. Okay, for those who are still running on legacy connections. We also have a USB-C to USB-C double-ended charging cable. And a, I believe this is a 45 watt USB-C power brick, okay? And actually, one of the best things about this is, uh, along with supporting USB-C, of course, is that the power brick is not very large, okay? Um, I don't have my Samsung phone charger here with me, but it's slightly bigger than my Samsung phone charger, and it can charge my phone, or really in, probably any phone, with quick charge um, that has USB-C. So it does work with that, which is a good thing. All right, so along with this uh, this cover here, it's a keyboard actually, all right? And it's also a kickstand. It's got a kickstand design. And we're gonna get a little bit more into that. Right now, we're just gonna talk about the build quality of the tablet. Okay, so first off, the build quality is actually really good. And if you can see, right down there is the connector. That's the bottom there, all right? But the build quality is just amazing. I mean, honestly, it's one of the best things about this tablet. First off, if you can see, it's very thin. That's the bottom connector where it docks in with the keyboard, the included keyboard kickstand, all right? And then here, we have one USB-C. This is a charging LED light. This is a volume up and down rocker, and then what you can't really tell or see, but in between there is a fingerprint sensor, and you press, put your fingerprint in between there, and it'll actually wake the tablet if it's not hibernating. And it will uh, not only wake the tablet, but it will um, actually log you in. So, see that? Boom, I'm in. Okay, so I'll actually get more into that later, but yeah, that fingerprint sensor is really awesome. Uh, as you can see from the screen, bezels on this is very small. According to uh, Huawei's site information, it says it's 84% uh, screen to body ratio. Up here you see two top firing speakers and two microphones. Okay, and then you have one front-facing webcam right here. It is not a Windows Hello cam. There is no IR camera like the Surface Pro. But, like I said, you can use the fingerprint sensor, which is just super snappy. And it just works really well. So, no complaints there. Although, I have used the Surface Pro, and I had a Surface Pro prior to this device. Uh, the i5 model, the, the new Surface Pro 2017, and um, 
the the windows hello with the ir camera is definitely cool as you can see the the display is definitely no slouch okay i mean this camera doesn't really do it justice but the viewing angles are really good sorry we're getting a little bit of reflection here part of the reason why i wanted to do this review is before i put a screen protector on this thing all right so but if you look, I mean, first off, the bezels are super small. So you get a lot of screen real estate without taking up a lot of tablet. Now let's look at the back. So again, the back of this, this is the titanium gray model. All right. Uh, this is a core M3 7th gen. And this is the one with four gigabytes RAM and 128 gigabytes internal storage. So part of the reason why I'm doing this review is because there's just not a lot of reviews on this device, but most of the professional reviews are all on the eight gig, um, higher RAM and higher, slightly higher powered i5Y series. And that one uh, comes in a champagne gold. This one comes in titanium gray, but I didn't really need the, the super high powered one, honestly, for what I was using this for. I wanted a Windows 10 tablet that was going to replace my aging Shield K1 Android tablet. And I read the writing on the wall. Android tablets are dang near dead. So, But if you look at this, I mean, honestly, the, the build quality of this thing is awesome. I mean, if I took off these stickers here, covered up that Huawei uh, logo, and put... Uh, an Apple logo here, you know, like the foil logo, the reflective logo. I could probably pass this off to, to most of the iTards, and they probably wouldn't even be able to tell the difference between this and an Apple device. Um, I mean, honestly, it really is dang near the same build quality as the iPad Pro 12.9. And I'm going to be comparing this device actually not only to the Surface Pro, which most people think is its direct competition, but I really feel design language wise, I feel like it was trying to like really mimic a lot of the things that the iPad Pro 12.9 does. Uh, believe it or not, this is actually slightly lighter than the iPad Pro 12.9. This comes in at just under 1.4 pounds, just the tablet alone. Uh, I think it's 1.37 pounds just for the tablet, and it's a hair thinner. So this is actually 0.27 inches thin, okay? I mean, for a 12.9 tablet, it's incredibly light, and it's actually not too uncomfortable to hold in portrait mode one-handed. So, anyways, um, enough about the build quality of the tablet. I, I just, I can't get enough of it. It's honestly one of the best things about this tablet, okay? It's really good. And this is a fanless design here, both for the M3 7th gen processor and for the Core i5 Y series. It's a low power, low TDP um, processor. Both are fanless designs and they're super thin. Now, couple of things that about the build quality that I kind of feel are dings okay I understand they were trying to do some things to like keep this light and portable but I really do think Huawei could have sprung for an extra USB-C port here because as it stands right now we have this little dongle here okay but this dongle What's not included in this, uh, it's nice they included the dongle, that's better than nothing. But what they did not include was the mate dock, which I'm told some models have the mate dock with it. Um, it's some of the European models from what I've read, and it's 512 gigabytes of storage. That model, for whatever reason, and it's not really common here in the States, comes with the mate dock. Okay? So... What I ended up picking up was a dongle, okay? I bought this on Amazon for uh, 50 or 60 bucks, and I can use this, right? 
I can do a couple things here. I can either use this as a hub, I can connect a USB-C drive along with USB 3.0 um, devices as well, maybe uh, an external mouse or uh, gamepad dongle, something like that. Uh, this has HDMI up to 4K 30Hz or 1080p 60Hz and Ethernet or Say I was hooking up an external USB 3.0 drive, I could hook this up to the one port and then uh, if I had to charge, I could do power pass through here. But, yes, I can do that. It's just kind of a bummer that Huawei only put one port on here so I can either transfer data or I can charge. And the only way I can do both is to buy a third party dongle or try to get their uh, mate dock which is probably going to be more expensive than this and the new mate dock 2.0 actually has less ports so just keep in mind buyer beware you will have to get one of these docks or something if you want to charge and transfer data at the same time okay so while we're talking about charging this uh, included charger, like I said, it's very portable, not very large, all right? And this thing uh, charges from, on average, I found it charged a little over 90-ish minutes from around 15% up to 90%. The last 10% or so is gonna take quite a bit longer to charge, but this is very light, it's very small, it's very compact. So those who are on the go, um, well, this really won't hardly take up any space or weight in your bag and you probably won't even know it's there. And I can tell you the tablet, you will barely know it's in there, in your book bag or whatever. Okay, because it is just that thin and light. I mean, you when you actually hold this in your hands and you see the size of it, and then you hold it, it, it almost belies the size of the dis display. Um, Along with that, due to it being a USB-C, you can also use a power brick. So if you're going to be on the go, um, you can use a power brick if you can't get to a wall outlet. But again, um, you know, some of those things, some of those factors are going to kind of reduce the portability factor of this. So yes, this thing is lightweight. Yes, you can stick it almost anywhere in almost any bag. And it's going to take up hardly any space and hardly any weight. But some of these things kind of reduce the portability of it. Um, the other thing that I found kind of a bummer was that it did not come with any slots for expandable storage as far as uh, micro SD. Now, to me, I really, I got it. They were trying to keep it thin, trying to keep it light, and I understand, but I really, really would have been okay with them making it just a hair thicker to put in a slot for micro SD. And I honestly think they could have done it even with something this thin. I really do. Because if they can do it with their phones, they could have done it with this tablet. So main uh, knocks on the design is no second USB-C port so that I could charge and transfer data at the same time without using a third party dongle or their mate dock. And then no micro SD slot, all right? So moving on, again, um, this thing, honestly, is really snappy, all right? It's just a joy to hold in the hands. Let's see here. It's really good to hold in the hands in tablet mode or even in the keyboard cover. Okay, I guess I... Huh, let's say my pin's required to sign in. All right, so I guess I failed the fingerprint login too many times or I was holding it. Um, but like I said, it's just really really good to hold in the hands as a tablet you can hold it in portrait mode landscape mode or you can put in this included keyboard cover that comes with it so the keyboard cover thankfully one is included and two is really quite good and it's actually much much better than the old version hold on here let's see if i can get this all right so that's the keyboard cover. If you look here, there's a hinge and it is much, much better than the old keyboard cover. All right, 
So this hinge in the back folds back multiple different degrees, multiple different angles, and it can actually fold back almost as far back as the included kickstand of the um, Surface Pro 2017. So the Surface Pro 2017 can fold back all the way to 160 degrees. This one can fold back to 100 Sorry, the Surface Pro 2017 can fold back to 165, and this one can fold back to 160, okay? Oh, no, it's telling me to put my... Okay, now it wants my pin. All right, don't look. Okay. So, um, like I said, it, it's just really good. The keyboard cover actually works as a smart cover, so when I fold it up, it actually puts it to sleep, and... Um, it's just really good, just a really good keyboard and a really good keyboard cover. Um, I can do this a couple different ways here. So right now it's in basically like laptop mode. But if I fold the keyboard back and you see it said auto rotate on. Now what happened was it actually went to tablet mode. Okay. Then I put it here, and it's back in laptop mode. All right, so I'm going to adjust this slightly so you can see the display. And all right, we're going to log in real quick. All right, so as you see here, right now I'm in laptop mode, and this keyboard is actually really great. Um, it's backlit. It has function keys. I can control brightness here from the keyboard. I can control my sound. All right. The sound on this is actually quite good. We're going to test that out pretty soon. I can mute the sound or turn it up. Okay. And then here uh, we have two levels of brightness and off. Low, high, off. Okay, if you want to use actual function keys, you're going to have to press the function key first and then it will work like a regular function key. Otherwise, and that locks, so there's a function lock. Right now it's backlit. Uh, I've tried this out and I've tried out some other keyboards um, besides this one. Uh, this is actually my third detachable that I've tried out. Um, the first one was the Acer Switch. I wasn't too crazy about that. The fingerprint reader was terrible and the keyboard was garbage. Um, I mean, it wasn't terrible, terrible, but it just really wasn't good. Um, and so this keyboard here, the other device I tried was the Surface Pro 2017. And I got to say, the Surface Pro 2017 probably really wins for the best keyboard. All right. Along with being backlit, the Surface Pro 2017 is adjustable. Uh, this one just lays flat on the ground. So for me, I kind of like my hands at a slight angle. So I like the ability on the Surface Pro 2017 to angle the keyboard. Um, the Switch 5 was able to angle the keyboard. I just, the typing experience was not that good. Thankfully, the typing experience on this is pretty good. And I'm able to type pretty quickly and not make a whole lot of mistakes on it. So that's good. Um, like I said, if I want to turn this into a tablet mode. Now it's in tablet mode. So he uses a tablet and I can put this, can actually put this really low you see here all right so if i was writing jotting notes or something like that okay or maybe just reading something at an angle and i wanted a better angle i can do that all right so we're going to put this back up and i'm going to rotate this back and we're going to put it back in keyboard mode uh one thing i noticed is that the battery life when it's in keyboard mode is not as good obviously um because the power for the keyboard comes from the tablet so battery life kind of goes down it takes a hit um when you are using keyboard mode also if you don't want to take it out of the keyboard cover and you just want to hold it like a tablet you can actually fold it all the way back 
not only does it go in tablet mode, but it shuts off the keys. So I'm pressing the keys right now and nothing. All right. So there's that. And I'm going to put it back into laptop mode. But as you see, I just keep changing modes on this and it's actually really versatile. Now, one thing I am going to talk about here is the trackpad. All right. The trackpad is actually really good. It feels good. It is not as big as the trackpad on the Surface Pro 2017. I like that trackpad better. But the good thing is, is that it does use Microsoft Precision drivers. Okay. So what does that mean? It means it supports Windows 10 gestures. All right. So I'm going to show you here. All right. Let's say... I want to zoom in, all right? I use my gestures. I'm zooming in, zooming out, okay? So, I'm not really like all that familiar with all the different uh, Microsoft and Windows gestures for the precision drivers. I just know it does support it. You can enable your gestures there from the mouse pad. All right, so it works great. No issues, working really, really good. Now, the other thing is the touchpad is really responsive, has good click, good feedback, uh, left and right mouse click. Okay, so there I just did a right mouse click. I can select print there. Let's go and print a PDF here, All right? Overall, the keyboard's good. I just wish that it would angle up like the Surface Pro 2017, and I wish that the trackpad was just slightly bigger. Okay, honestly, other than that, typing on it's good. Keys are islanded. What that means is that they're separated. There's a little bit of space between them. Um, they're mostly flat. I don't really feel any curve to them, but it's good feedback, and the key travel overall is really good. Okay, so... Overall, no complaints other than a couple little naggles that I mentioned um, as far as the keyboard goes. Now, as far as productivity, okay, if you're a power user, you are probably not going to want to get this model. But if you're looking for a tablet that can also sometimes be a laptop and um, knock out some productivity tasks, so far, I've been able to, you know, do things where I'm on the web, I'm checking my email uh, using Edge. Um, I'll be typing up a PDF document, like a fillable PDF. And honestly, I haven't had any issues. It's been really responsive. I'm able to switch between... Right now, I don't really have any apps open. Open up something else. Okay. But overall, it's been really good. Um, I've done a little bit of light gaming on this. This is not really a gaming machine, so just be aware of that. Okay, but I have done a little bit of light gaming. I'll open up some of the games here. All right, there's the start menu. As you see, I'm in tablet mode right now. Okay, um, actually what we'll do is I'll fire up a game real quick. And I'm not even going to turn this, well, I'll turn this up. We'll put this at 70%. So I'm going to open up Asphalt 8 because this is a game that's really good touch opt optimized game. Okay. And I think right now I've got this set at 80% of the native resolution and I've got this on between medium and high settings. Um, the top firing speakers overall sound really good. The display, again, I can't really tell you how good this looks. Okay, so there's the sound. No, I don't want to do that. Let me adjust the camera here.
So as you can hear, the sound is really good. That's only 70%. That's not even turned up all the way. Oh, I crashed. Do some tricks, try to build my meter up. This is interesting looking through the camera and trying to play the game. So you'll have to forgive me if I'm doing terrible. Okay, so I won first place, yay. So as you can see, um, like I said, this was 80% of the native resolution. I'm between me medium and high settings. I'll turn that down just a bit. As you hear, it's quite loud. As you can hear, it gets up quite loud, and that was just 70%. Let me close this out. But playing that, there was nary a frame hiccup. You will see occasional slowdowns here and there, um, but overall, really, it's overall really pretty good. Um, like I said, don't expect to like play Fortnite or honestly anything really challenging. You might be able to get away playing some older games. I hear Skyrim plays pretty well on this, um, at least a Core M3. And it has an Intel HD 615 processor, or sorry, integrated Intel HD 615. The processor is the Core M3, um, 7Y30. So not really a super strong... Uh, graphical solution is integrated most integrated solutions are you know not the greatest um and this one is one of the weaker ones as far as intel's line of integrated graphics so like i said it's not going to knock your socks off um uh, i'm able to play final fantasy 15 pocket edition i can either turn down the resolution to like half or right now I've got it on light mode, so. You can see my little F rep, or not F reps, but afterburner frame counter. Okay, so. Turn the sound back down. Right now it's at 50%. This is another fun little game. It's cloud optimized. Uh, not cloud optimized, but touch optimized. So, And the asphalt game I was playing that was not only touch optimized but you can hook up a gamepad too i like playing with touch and honestly this thing is so light that it's actually not that bad playing on a large size tablet okay now if you can see my little afterburner counter okay i'm maintaining overall 60 frames per second this is on light graphics so this is nothing challenging you can turn up the graphics settings, but the frame rates are going to dip on this, and this is really not that demanding of a game. Okay, so again, just bear this in mind. Like I said, this is not really designed to be um, a gaming machine. Sounds colder today. Yeah, getting pretty dark out here. Something else about loading times is the internal 128 gigabyte storage is actually. Um, it's a SATA 3 SSD, so you won't notice it most times in real-world application, but it's not going to be as fast as the NVMe uh, SSD. So 
Sorry, that reflection's really terrible for my light. Okay, so, as you see, you can do a little bit of gaming on this, but like I said, don't expect it to, like, blow any socks off or, you know, just really, just, uh, completely just demolish through games, okay? Um, one other thing I'm going to show you here, I'm going to turn this at a little bit more of an angle so you're not getting the reflection, but we're going to play a little bit of Netflix, and Netflix actually looks really good on this and sounds really good, so... Okay, so here's the Netflix menu. Where's my anime that I'm watching? Been watching, I just started watching Saint Saya. By the way, this is not like an HDR display or anything, but it is just, it's a really good IPS display. It has little to none IPS back bleed, backlight bleed. Okay, let's see here. I'm gonna play some anime. Okay. All right, so that's Shut up. that's enough. I'm going to go ahead and pause it for now. Okay, welcome back. Uh, that's going to be it for the first part of this review. So, sorry to end it abruptly, but that's all we're going to talk about for the time being. Never fear, though. We're going to come back. We're going to do a second part. Uh, I'm going to touch more on things like uh, experiential daily usage and performance impressions, uh, battery usage, battery performance, and also talk about the pen experience, which I have not touched on yet, but we'll hopefully have my mate pen in by then, and we'll talk about pen usage, and I'll also show a couple other pens that we can use. But for the time being, that's going to be it. I'm going to be signing off. We'll come back and revisit this uh, great device later. If you enjoyed the video, click that thumbs up. If you didn't, click that thumbs down. Tell us what we can do to make it better. If you want to see more videos like this, please click subscribe. And for the time being, thank you for watching. We'll see you in part two, and we'll see you on the next one. This is Trintech off the net.